Well, welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're going down my road. Oh, it's like, it's like we're going back in time here. We're going down my road in Claire's old five series. I love this car. I miss driving this car, honestly. It's such a nice car. But why are we driving Claire's old five series? It's not because I've bought it back because I missed it so much that I've sold the Evoque <laughs> and we've bought this back. Although I wish it was that, but it's not that. Um, it's actually come back because the 5 Series has got a warranty claim on it. I mean, a few... I can't even remember when it was now, but... I got a phone call from my mate that bought this car about 7 o'clock at night saying, Kev, I can't shut the boot on my car. Now... When you're in, in this trade and you get, it doesn't, ma it doesn't really matter who the phone call is from. When you sell a car and you get that phone call from a customer that says something got, has gone wrong, one, it's not very nice. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't handle it very well. Potentially shouldn't be in this business because of that reason. I don't know. But I, I don't like it when it happens. But it does happen and it's a very big reality of this job. So you just have to sort it out. And, it's, uh, and when he phoned me, it was like 7 o'clock at night, middle of winter, pitch black. He was at his, one of his lad's football training sessions. And he, said, he phones me up and says, Kev, I can't shut the boot. I'm like, what do you mean you can't shut the boot? He said, I literally can't shut the boot. It won't stay shut. My head is sort of thinking, has the, I don't know, has he, is the button stuck in or has he done this or has he done that? And you start filling your head full of assumptions, but what you really need to do is have a look and see what's going on. Now, and it, but sort of what, straight away, when you think, right, you can't shut the boot, is in the middle of town. Weirdly, I was only a couple of miles away at that exact time taking my daughter Isla to have some physio done on her leg. It was really weird, really, really strange coincidence. So we actually drove around to see Ammo, and he was completely right. But not only would the boot not close, the, the springs are under so much tension on the boot that it pops up real quick. <laughs> so <laughs> luckily it weren't raining. But like the only thing that, that he could do is drive it along with the boot open. So I started having a little look and I mean, there was nothing obvious. Straight away you just think that the solenoid catch has failed and it's not locking the striker over, hence why the boot isn't staying shut. Straight away you think that and you think, well, I haven't got, I ain't got one of a boot solenoid in me, in me back pocket, so I'm not going to be able to fix it here and now. And then, every day is a school day, completely well up for that notion. I've said it on the channel before. So I had a little Google up. We just had a little Google up straight away, because I've never had it before. You know, I don't sell a million E60s, I've never had it. And straight away we found out what the problem was. So I'll tell you what, we'll just get to the, we'll just get to the to the site and then we'll have a little look. I'll see you in a minute. So as I was saying, our first Google Gnostic search came up with, um, it came up to a forum actually, same fault, and a guy wrote on the forum, can't remember who it was, but whoever it was, nice, because he actually said, I had the same fault, I replaced the boot solenoid and it didn't fix it. That was my first clue that it might not be the boot solenoid. Um, and then the next one, the second one, said about the boot wiring that it's a common fault and where the boot hinges up and down like a lot of hatchbacks the boot wiring degrades snaps and once it doesn't get a signal saying that the boot is closed it won't keep the latch over blah 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 and this is what we found so oh i haven't looked in here actually yet hold on let me make sure there's let me make sure there's no dead bodies in here first something is a gangster's car in it no it's nice and clean didn't want there to be anything embarrassing there for my customer. So um, I'll tell you what, let me get that inner trim removed and then I'll show you what we found. Well, here we go, look, people. Other than the, wow, look at the size of that power cable. 
So this is what we found, which is a bit upsetting really because I mean someone's obviously been in here before because it's all taped up and I mean there's a fair I'm guessing there's a fairly hideous repair under there yeah there is I mean that is a bad repair look at that shocking which is weird because everything else on this car has been maintained really beautifully I'll tell you I'll show you what it was doing let me take that off there hold on so we found it like that was that brown wire disconnected? Because whoever, I mean, whoever soldered that, good lord, it definitely wasn't their forte. That's that's what we can say about that. So if I take out my rather large inspection light, so I mean this. Hold on. <laughs> Do you know what? I've just. That really wasn't supposed to happen. Because when that wire was off before, the boot lid wouldn't close. Now it's. Oh, I feel sick. Luckily, I haven't got. I oh, imagine the key was in there. Christ, I hope we can. <laughs> I'm not going to tell Ammo about this. Let's see if we can. Getting in the old fashioned way. Oh, thank God for that. Woo! <laughs> that was really scary. I'm not going to tell Emma about that. Look very unprofessional. So, um, well, no, it doesn't work at all. So, I'll tell you what, we're going to quickly fix that wiring. Let's <laughs> see if it works properly. What we actually got here. So, what I've done. I've taken this trim off. Ugh. So I've taken this off, slackened off the wire there, so we've got a bit more free play. So I could pull it out of the hinge, so you can see exactly what's going on. So we've got we've got a brake there, beautiful repair, complete brake there, brake there, brake there. That yellow and purple one is now going. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to take some chunks out of that and reinsert the same, so they're all the same length. And then I think what I'll do, I'll probably keep that unclipped from here, so the wire hinges at a different place, so it doesn't do it again. Had a bit of an accident on the way here, and the box of connectors fell over. I think Ammo's going to have, Ammo's going to have a load of electrical connectors down his down his seatbelt. Oh dear. <laughs> Now, also, whilst it's here, any of you lovely subscribers will know that when I sold this car and when I bought it in, randomly, something had happened to the driver's door lock. I mean, it looks like it's had an attempted theft. We don't know what happened to it. We don't know whether, whether the battery went flat and someone thought it would be easier to sort of drill the door lock and put a screwdriver in it and get the door open rather than smashing the window. I don't know. But our plan was to wait for a handle and the whole assembly to come up in carbon black on eBay and then just buy it and replace it all. Because this is all sort of one. All of this here, which is usually separate on a lot of cars, that is all one part. Handle separate, all that is one part. And to get it off BMW was literally like nearly £500 unpainted. So we were waiting for a carbon black one to come up. A carbon black one never did. So we ended up getting one in sapphire black, which is what is here. So what we're going to do, we're going to fit this to the door, obviously, and we've got the key blade for it. So what we'll end up doing is swapping the key blade over into Ammo's key. So the key blade will fit the driver's door lock, but it won't fit the boot because we didn't get the boot lock, unfortunately. So all we're going to do is end up just putting the key blade for the boot on the same key ring and then we're and then we're good to go but it was sapphire black and i've just had it painted and come from the body shop so it is now carbon black look at that look so we'll get that swapped out as well to make that way better than what it was we'll come back in a moment when that's done and see how it looks oh, how lovely is it when you take a door panel off a 15 year old car is this now 
and like and like the whole weatherproof membrane is still in one piece that's never been off it's not all ripped up but oh i love that oh please come out don't scratch ammo's door oh oh what's loose come on yeah well almost there Oh, well, we've got a hole, people. We've got a big hole. Had to take out, well, had to take the actuator and everything out to get, but we've got a hole, people. Well, the back's on. Now i just got to slip that in there, look. Oh, look at that, look. Oh, I'll do that little screw up there. Nice. Come back in a mo. We've got my handle on. Well, there we go, people. Look at that. Look at that. Don't that look better? Oh! Just had to quickly get that out of there, get it done. Claire's just taken the, the Audi there that was there to MOT. I just got this all back together in the nick of time. That's all lovely, lovely. So that's done. And I was just waiting for Claire to bring me because I'm sort of still because I'm sort of still between here and home and all of my wiring. This is a handy thing when you've been in the workshop, you end up with a load of old wiring looms and wiring and all that sort of stuff to repair wiring looms, funny enough. So I'll tell you what I'll quickly say, right? If you're doing, when you're doing soldering on wiring looms, when you've got two, the sort of two open wires at the end of each, at the end of each connection, don't, don't, don't twist them together leave them sort of opened up so when they overlap the solder sort of flows in between the wires you'll see what i mean actually i'll just do this one now. get my little bit of solder there i am hopefully i won't get my head in the way so it'll just be a whole lot of ginger hair then will it ginger and gray unfortunately these days literally get the solder on the end there that's a big old wire that one so it might take a while to heat up and get flowing oh that's going there you go look at that perfecto well, that's that one done i'll just do the rest there you go, look, that's all them done. So we'll just insulate them. Right, so there's the big old repair under all that insulation there. And then what I'll do, I've still got this material tape and sort of, which is actually proper wiring loom tape. So I'll cover it all with that. And there we go, people. So what I've actually done is I've left this, this big old floppy bit of wire in here i've pulled it out further from the wiring loom there and i've pulled it out and i'm actually going to leave it out of the clips here because as you can see by there if i put that back in to the clip so that white clip needs to go into that hole there but if i do that the wiring loom is so tight it creates a hinge at the back of the tailgate hinge there so if it's too tight let me show you so if it's too tight say it's say it's stuck there and, it, and, it, and it's sucked in there when the boot closes the boot hinges like that and then if it's if it's tight there's a right angle there's a right angle right not there there's a right angle right here if it's too tight and it ends up just kinking up and that's when it will snap again so I'm going to leave it out with a big old floppy U-bend like that because it's going to be behind it's going to be behind the quarter trim you won't even see it look I'm going to leave it like that because all it does when you shut the boot the whole wiring loom just goes back look doesn't kink up just moves and that'll be better so hopefully when I shut this boot now hold on let me get the keys Shut this boot up, got the keys in my hand. Nice. Nice. 
Nice. Nice. Yeah, job done. I'll tell you what, we'll just delete the fault memory, make sure there's no open circuits in wiring or anything like that. And then we'll box it up. Nice, nice. That's what we like to see, look. All clear. Marvellous. Well, there we go, people. That's all done. Boot is fixed. Handle. How much better does that handle look? I wish I'd have done that when Claire had it, but I just didn't. I didn't have time. I didn't. I didn't manage to find the handle like what we have done now, and it's all done now. So, and I will be well happy. I mean, it's a hard one when you get returns or warranty claims, especially when you sell a car to a mate. You know, they say don't sell cars to friends and family and. But you know what, I'd, I'd rather one of my friends bought a car off me than someone else and then then they had a problem with a warranty claim and because you know some people can be a bit... So it's done, it's sorted out. Don't ask me why that's here, that'll be on another video. Um, so that's pretty much it for that one. Ammo's car's done, I've got to get back onto the Audi because the Audi has sold so now I've got to get back onto prepping that. So all I'll say is, thanks for watching this one, guys and girls. Hit that subscribe button if you like what's going on. Hit that like button. Hit that notifications button. Drop us a comment. Let us know how we're getting on. See you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye-bye.